I just want to ask, like, do you use like a, a digital, like like a word clock to like run all these devices together? I mean, is that something that can affect how the networks talk to each other or? What a great question, Scott. As soon as you take an analog audio signal and you turn it into digital, now you're dealing with clocking. And the reason for that is, is really, really simple. A digital signal <clears throat> is nothing more than just a bunch of pulses, basically. The voltage pulses up. And that's seen as a, as a one and the voltage pulses down and it's seen as a zero. That's an oversimplification, but it's basically the idea. And digital is just a whole series of ones and zeros that are all chained together to make numbers. And then the numbers are then converted and, you know, are, are, are then translated into some other piece of information. But what's important is because all of this is numbers that are, are in a chain, in a line, in a time sequence, it's very important that whatever's transmitting that information and whatever's receiving that information are in sync with each other so that I sent you a one, I hear the one, I sent you a zero, I hear the zero, I sent you a one and then a one and a one and then a zero, I hear the one, I hear the one, I hear the zero. They have to be in sync with each other. If this is going a little earlier than that, then it's very easy for the information to get lost along the way. So that's where we get into clocking and where everything has to be run to one reference point. Every digital device has to all be looking to one central clock as this is telling me when my information is supposed to get to me. This is, this is, this is my time reference. A good analogy is uh, an orchestra with a conductor. If there's not a conductor, then you know the tr the trumpets are playing in one time and the the strings are playing in another, and they're trying to listen to each other, and but they're not necessarily in sync. And yeah. you have a conductor that's basically saying, "This is the time. This is where we are. This is where we're all," and everything's following that. Any time you deal with digital audio, no matter how simple, you need a conductor. As soon as you get two different digital devices, you need a conductor that's conducting that that orchestra. This is true of all digital networks, no matter, even if it's a simple, <clears throat> what we call AES digital audio, which is a very simple two channel, typically over an XLR cable digital signal. Um, it still requires the sending thing has to send a clock. The receiving thing has to hear that clock in order to know that it's getting the signals in time. All of these networks, there's some sort of clocking scheme that's pointing back to this is my master clock and everything is following that. And as long as everything's following that, everything is great. In most of the um, true, what I call true network um, protocols, there's something is designated, we've designated something as the master clock. Uh, and then in, we've designated, or the system is already decide, deciding that if for some reason that master clock goes away, if the conductor suddenly falls over, faints, who are we going to follow? You know, um, the first violinist is going to jump up in the chair and is, is now going to, or jump up on the, the, the podium and is now going to direct us. Like we, we've got a, a secondary thing um, that we're going to switch over to. And then we're going to follow that clock. If you do think of that, like if a symphony was going, doing their thing and all of a sudden the, the conductor just sort of like fainted or just got angry and walked away. And the first violinist, not that that's ever happened. Um, and the, the first, first violinist then just, you know, concert master just suddenly jumps up and like picks up the baton and starts to, well, if they were in the middle of a piece, it would probably stumble. Like there would probably be some, a uh, little bit of chaos for a couple of seconds and then, they, okay, now we're following this and that. And that's exactly what happens with most um, audio networks. If something happens with that, the clock that everything's following and it has to switch to another clock, quite often there's a couple seconds of I'm confused and I don't know what to do, which is why we, we want whatever our master clock is to be something that's very stable and very central and isn't going to fall off the network. I mean, I nearly always use just my mixing console as the master clock. If that fails, I've got bigger problems anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, right. you know, it's like uh, if that suddenly drops off the network or, or something bad happens, like, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got other issues I'm going to have to deal with. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so that's, that's the basic of clocking. And it is probably one of the most difficult things to to get right consistently, especially when you start mixing and matching protocols. So are all audio protocols able to send clocking information via their primary connections? I mean, um, the short, very brief 
non-rapid whole answer is yes. Depending on the protocol, and again, this is definitely um, Googleable, so I, we're not going to go too too deep into this. Some protocols send the clocking information kind of side by side. The audio, so the audio is like here, and the clocking is is here. Some of them, it's they marry them together, and it's all part of the same signal. Different protocols do it different differently um, <clears throat> for different reasons. All of the protocols, there's some sort of of clocking that is is coming right along with the yeah, I'm, I was trying to think if there was an ex some arcane exception, but no, no. Basically, they all now <clears throat> you can, and this used to be very common in studios because there were so many different digital protocols that were being traded back and forth between different things. A lot of devices have a word clock input and output, yeah. and you can clock everything together with that and use that clocking independent of the digital audio stream. So yeah, your question is actually really good now that I think about it because we were talking about 15 or 20 or 30 different devices and some were being connected via AES and some were being connected via MADI and some were being connected by like all these different protocols and it was like a, a giant headache. <clears throat> and so you could run the word clock, you could run the clock completely independent of the audio, clock everything together with a central clock and then everybody's on the same page and it's not actually, you're not relying on the, the clocking information that is coming down the actual digital protocol. So I got I've there done, eventually. I've done that. I've done that recently uh, run. I mean, I don't have too much stuff going on in my little front of house world, but uh, you know, clocking everything to an Apogee Big Ben and mm -hmm. I was having a little issue with it at one point and just kind of switched to like using the consoles, the clock and through Maddie and that solved the issue. But that's, that's kind of often how I do it using a master external clock. You know, clocking does affect the sound of things. Yeah. The, the stability of the clock does affect the way that the um, digital an to analog and analog to digital conversion takes place and exactly kind of what things sound like. Um, it's a huge debate as to, what's better and what's not better and is an external clock better or is the internal clock better and that's a completely different conversation what you use as a clock does actually affect the sound of things for me a lot of times it's a bit of a trade-off between am i getting enough benefit and your big ben versus internal console um is a perfect example of this am i getting enough benefit using an external, very expensive, very, very stable, very, very excellent clock. Am I getting enough from that to justify I've added another device to my system and another wire connection? And, oh, if there's anything flaky about that wire connection or anything flaky about that device, literally my whole entire rig is going to crash. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the trade-off is like, am I getting enough benefit to justify the risk. There's no perfect answer to that. It's yeah, just, sure. you know, and sometimes it just comes down to, you know, your experience in the field and no, I'm always using the same clock and the same rack with the same wire and it's the same thing and it's fine versus, oh no, I'm on festivals. And so now I'm using the, you know, internal for, you know, this time. And then this time I'm using my rack and this time I'm not using my rack. And this time I'm, you know, it, well, I'm, I'm definitely, thinking about using doing that less often since I was having an issue recently and it was close to a show and it was just, you know, there's bad connection somewhere in there and I had to quickly get out of it, but I would not have been happy if it had happened in the middle of a set. Right. And, and like I said, and, it, and, and, you know, you, you sit there and you think like, okay, I, I feel like it sounds better with the big Ben. I feel like it sounds better with an external clock. Yeah. But how much better, how much different. And then, yeah. You know, it's it, it's a value judgment. 